My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, my name is Caroline De Posada. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I am an author, a, a motivational speaker, an attorney, a mom, and a wife. <laughs> okay, so how did you do all of that? So let's... Well, wait, uh... wait, wait, hold on. So why do you have a, a, a Napoleon Hill book on there? Shouldn't you have a Looking Over the Edge on there? <laughs> I, I never got my copy. Where's my copy? I sent it to you. Did you? I did. And I somebody from my team ready. jacked. Hold, somebody from my team jacked it. I'm gonna have issues with them. I was expecting oh. you to have read the book before before we went alive. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what's the book. Give us the short version. So the short version, so it's an inspirational story. It's, it's what we call a teaching memoir. And it's a true story uh, based on an event that happened to my family. I was on the road with my husband and my three kids on December 31st, uh, 2017. It was New Year's Eve. And it started snowing unexpectedly where we were, uh, which was Asheville, North Carolina, is not a place where it normally snows. But... In this particular case, it started snowing, and as we were driving up the mountain to going um, to meeting up with our friends in a cabin that they were that we were staying at for the evening, our car lost control, and we almost uh, quite literally fell off the edge of a cliff. Um, we, uh, my, the car started spinning and spinning, and I and 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 I heard my husband explain exclaim like, "Oh my God, please don't let my family fall off this." cliff and then out of nowhere the car stopped and luckily by the by the grace of god we did not fall off the cliff but we had to make some serious decisions we were there we were stranded for hours and hours uh and we eventually had to decide to abandon the car and take our four-year-old our six-year-old and our nine-year-old uh climbing up a mountain three three miles in the snow with no gps no cell phone um and just climb up the mountain to try to get to safety. Damn, you crazy stuff. <laughs> and this is in the book. And this is what the story is about. So the, so that is the climax of the book, right? The, the, the climax of the book is that, um, that we almost fell off the mountain. And that, that's the reason that the, that the book is called Looking Over the Edge. But everything that led up to that moment and everything that happened after that moment is really what the book is about. That's where the life lessons are. That's where the motivation is. That's where the inspiration is. It's different from a self-help book in the sense that it's not telling you uh, what you need to do to, to make your life better or to improve, and to improve yourself. It's really a story where you take the lessons for yourself. So you decide what you get out of the story and, 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 from what I, from the comments that everyone has told me, it's a story that fills you with hope, with perspective. Uh, it just it's it's a beautiful story. Just the fact that you guys are still alive that's a miracle by itself. That's I mean, right. You know, it's right there. I mean, okay. So here's my question. I hear a lot of individuals, and I've had so many debates about this, and I haven't won any of them, but I feel like I won. But uh, they tell me that I haven't won, right? But, so what's the difference between motivation and inspiration? And when do you need those two? Because if they're different, then that means there's different needs for them in different places for them. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think that's a really good question. And I think that they overlap with each other. But I think that the difference is that inspiration comes from um, your ability to see your story in someone else, your ability to relate to somebody else's um, a story and therefore you are borrowing the energy that they're putting out. So you're bo borrowing their hope. You are borrowing their, their ability to handle things. You're borrowing their perspective. So you are being inspired by their example. Motivation is something that is required for you to succeed. That is, you know, a, a mo you cannot move forward without motivation. Um, you need motivation to achieve greater goals. You need motivation to make more money. You need motivation to lose weight. You need motivation to, you know, 
make your marriage work. And that, that, is a, that comes from internal. Now people think that they can motivate you, but in reality, they cannot motivate you. Motivation is something that comes from within you. What they can do is in, inspire you to find that motivation within yourself. Right. So I don't I, I never tell people that I, you know, that I motivate them because in reality, what I'm doing is, is that I'm inspiring and is inspiring them either by my perspective, my example, my tools, my knowledge, my my wisdom, my hope. And, but they find the motivation. And if they find the motivation within themselves, they're unstoppable. Yeah. My motivation for staying marriage is my wife is an attorney. So there's a lot of motivation in staying it's keeper here. to keeper. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, she was the first Persian Muslim girl that was president of Preparation Law School. So she, I didn't just marry a normal one. I married the ringleader. So definitely we're keeping this one. That's amazing. So well, is, she and I have a lot in common then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I need, to keep, I, I need to keep you guys around and happy. That's how it's got to be. So here's my other question. Would you say that someone that wants to start their path in entrepreneurship and in business, do they need to read more books, more motivational, more inspiration? How do you get them started? Because as you start, the minute you decide that you want to go do something, some goals, there are challenges on the way there. So what helps people not to give up when they are met with challenges? Well, so of course, the answer is yes, they have to read. The, whether they should be reading inspirational books or motivational books, that's, that's entirely up to the person. Uh, I think everyone should read self-help books. Everyone should read personal development. My father was a motivational speaker, and he uh, wrote a book called Don't Eat the Marshmallow Yet, and he, and he, and he gave a TED Talk, and, and uh, that turned into Don't Gobble the Marshmallow Yet and Keep Your Eye on the Marshmallow. These are self-help books. These give you tools to succeed. So for example, the Don't Eat the Marshmallow book, that's on delayed gratification. That is a skill that you need to learn. Delayed gratification is one of the essential skills of success. Think and grow rich, that is changing your perspective and your mindset so that you can create an abundance mentality. It's a, it's, it, they're great tools in your toolbox. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, I think that's a must read for everyone on the planet. Everyone in the whole world should read that book. Well, go easy. Let's go with Thinking Grow Rich first. Then we'll go with Stephen Covey because a lot of those principles are from Thinking Grow Rich. I'm not going to say nothing. He's a uh, cool guy. It's listen, all right. Listen, we all, all the information, the truth is, is that all the information is, uh, is the same, it's just packaged differently. And the reason that the information is the same isn't because we're copying each other, it's because the principles are proven. They're tested and true, they work. And the reason that uh, they're packaged differently is because we as human beings are unique individuals and what I can relate to is different from what you can relate to. So I may connect with the seven habits of highly effective people and you may connect with Think and Grow Rich, but as long as we're reading, we are learning the tools. And that's what really matters. You know, it's a, you know, so why they're not teaching? Why you're not advocating that they should be teaching this stuff in school in Florida? Why is it I haven't no, been notified that the school district, because of Caroline, changed their entire curriculum because an esquire told them that they need to? Why is it I have not got that response? Ah, uh, because I have because I've been busy teaching my own kids the rules. <laughs> I've been reading those books to my own kids and I haven't, I haven't become an advocate yet, but you know what? The truth is, is that you're right. The, that every, you, you know what happened in Korea? In Korea, my father's book, Don't Eat the Marshmallow, became the number one best-selling book for seven weeks in a row above Harry Potter. It was number one. And uh, Don't Eat the Marshmallow became so famous in Korea and the principle of delayed gratification aligned so well with the Koreans that they actually made it required reading for the youth. So as of today, which has been 10 years or, or 15 years since the book was written, every Korean student reads Don't Eat the Marshmallow through their, in their school because it's required reading. And my father used to always say, all schools should be implementing these techniques. And I completely agree with you. I think that, I think that all schools should have uh, personal development as part, as part of their curriculum. I've been learning this principle since I was seven years old and I, 
I attribute my So my question is, did your dad say how long it takes? Because my, my delay gratification has been a while, so I'm having a little bit of a doubt here and there. Did he mention, do I got, just give me the shortcut. What, how many years did he say, I need to do this stupid delay thing? How many years? Just give me yeah, the shortcut. Nothing, nothing, it's, in it's life been has a, nothing in life has a shortcut, my friend. And at the end of the day, you know, um, you can implement the tools, but there's always the X factor. And that X factor is the uncontrollable. The X factor is you can be in the right place at the right time and make the right connection and all of a sudden your business skyrocketed or something can happen and throw you off course and that is the x factor of life we can't control that no. and and that makes it fun to me that's just like life like what it will be very boring if the x factor wouldn't have been there it's that's not right. what happens it's how you and i interpret it and the meaning that we attach to that circumstance so to me, that's what makes it fun, you know? And, and, and I guess the older I get, you know, I look like I'm 26, 27, but the older that I get, I recognize that it's not just one outcome. It's, and, 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 and a lot of times, it's not the results. It's the journey that you go through, the enjoyment, the fulfillment that you get throughout enjoying it. Like your dad. I'm pretty sure he never cared about how much money he made off the book. I think it was the fulfillment that he gets. He's like, okay, uh, I, he shows some muscle. He goes, okay, I did that. Because of my work, they're studying it. It, it wasn't because of my work I became a millionaire, you know? Well, but, I, that, you know? Actually, I have a, a great story for you. So when, 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 he, when his book blew up in Korea the way that it did, he got a phone call from an agent, and they wanted to trans late his book into a children's version. They wanted a children's book. And this was before it became required reading. And the agent read the contract and the contract that they were giving him for the children's book was something like they wanted to pay him, I don't know, like $5,000 for the rights of the book. And the agent called him and said, you'd be crazy to take this deal because it's just not enough money. Your book is number one. You know, they should be paying you a lot more for the rights. You know, you, you should not you should not do this. And my dad said, "Okay, let me think about it, and I'll call you back." And he thought about it, and he said, "You know, uh, I think that every child should should have the right to read this story, and I think it's going to impact lives." And the Korean people have been so good to me; they've welcomed me, they've accepted my book, they've they've honored my work. And now I'm going to turn my back on them when they because they don't have the money to pay for. For a children's book and he called the agent and he said against your advice i'm going to give them the deal and they were like you're crazy you're crazy so he gave them the deal a year later he got a check for like a hundred and forty seven thousand dollars and it was only based on children's like that check was just children's book sales and the agent was like oh my god this was such a great deal and my father always used to How come me, I don't have a copy of that book? What's up with that? That's cold-blooded. Where's my copy? No, you know what? I sent you the Looking Over the Edge, and, and, and you didn't even read it, and you didn't get it, so now you're going to have to go on Amazon and buy it for yourself. What can I do? Do you know how many books? Do you know how many books? That's not an excuse, though. But do you know how many books I get? And it's sometimes I wish people would have not sent me books because this is what happens. I get guilt trip. Of, of, of me saying that this book cost a tree and somebody wrote it, it's like my duty, my obligation. So if you go right now to my house, like if my wife ever, you know, divorces me, it will be because I bought too much shit off of Amazon. And it will be because of, two, I mean, I don't know, can you, you can't see my, hold on, I, I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. Check that out. Yeah. See that right there? Look at that. So it's all, and, and then and then here I'll show you this, I'll show you this, I'll show you that, and then check this out. There's more stuff behind this. Goes on. So don't talk to me about books. Like I'm having, I'm having a hard time keeping up with all that. But I got to tell you something. I keep them around me because you never know when you're gonna have that extra five, seven, ten minutes that you could just read it. So I keep them around here. So that way it's, it's, it's definitely, it's useful. And it makes me feel good that I'm surrounding myself with people that are more wiser than me, more educated, more known than myself around me. And I'm like, that gives me a good feeling. 
just to have it. I don't need to read the book. The fact that you send it, I just feel good. I'm like, okay, they got it. But your dad's book, you got to send it. I mean, I got to give one. Do you have kids? Oh, my daughter is only, she's 16 months now. Oh. And I got to tell you this. She has watched more documentary than some uh, full-grown ass men or women on this planet. Wow. She, oh, when I'm at the house, when I'm at my mother-in-law's house, we only watch documentaries. Like she's seen so many documentaries on whales, dolphins, penguins, Yellowstone. She's seen the, all documentaries about, I mean, anything documentary she's seen. I don't know how much of it she's absorbed, but at least I'm putting good influence. So she doesn't watch these garbage stuff that everybody else watch. I'm just well, thinking he's got to be happy. You know? Listen to this. They've done studies on children and it turns out that it is more important to have a big library of books in a home where there's a child than it is to actually um, give the child the book to read. Just the presence of the books inspires the children to become better readers. Oh, she's going to read books by force, by choice, by, by motivation, by inspiration, by me buying things. Like every bribe you could possibly think of is going to have to do with, you read the book, we'll give you this. You read the book, we're going to give you this. That's it. So if you got to, I mean, I wish somebody would have done that to me. But but I also think that they need to be given the choice and the reasoning why we emphasize why reading book is good. So it can be dictatorship where go do this and they don't know the reasoning. I think once they know the reasoning behind it, it works better. Okay. That's, that's my philosophy on that one. But also... I think, you know, the, the, the parents, who they have around is also important too, you know? Oh, of course. Just like it's, it, who you have around you is important. Definitely. It's, it's, it's always the case. And, and that's why I'm debating between private school or public school. I'm debating. I don't know. I got to do a little bit more studying. I went to public school. I turned out okay. My wife went to all private school. She turned out okay. So now I'm like debating. You know, she thinks, you know, private is much better, this, this. I think the class sizes might be a little bit less, but to me is let's find out, let's find good friends for them. That's more important than the school they're going to. Very true. Very true. And you can find friends in any good, any neighborhood. It doesn't have to be the expensive. It doesn't have to be Beverly Hills. So tell us this. How did you go from being an attorney to a speaker? Or do you talk about legal stuff when you speak? No, I, I don't talk about legal stuff. I went from an attorney to be to a speaker because my father died. And I, um, when he died, I really didn't want his message to die with him. I, he loved the work that he did. He did it his whole life. He loved to study human behavior. He loved to, um, he loved to spread a good message. And, and uh, while he was on his deathbed, I was just like, I cannot let this legacy uh, die. So I, uh, you know, he passed away and I uh, dissolved my law firm. I sold it to my partner. Uh, I stayed on as a consultant. It took me about three years to be able to completely, uh, you know, um, detach myself because I had a, a thriving law firm and I dedicated myself 100% to speaking and writing books. And now, uh, recently, I've uh, begun these wellness challenges and the wellness challenges have been a life changer because it allows me. So I, I wasn't doing any coaching because I, my speaking and my writing didn't allow me the opportunity to do it. But during COVID, since our, the speaking circuit, you know, went went dead for a little while, um, I was getting a lot of requests for coaching. And what ended up happening was I created this group and through that group, I started doing group coaching and we did these wellness challenges. And in these wellness challenges, we are, it's basically like depositing into our bank account. So they're depositing into their physical bank account, their emotional bank account and their spiritual bank account. And they spend 28 days with me uh, and I teach Where's them. Where's my invitation for the group? I never got invited. What, what happened with that? Well, I feel like I'm missing out. Florida doesn't like California. That's it. <laughs> I'll come to that conclusion. We're, we're gonna, You're all I, jealous of our weather. You're gonna, jealous my, of our, our weather. Our next challenge is starting June 22nd. So you are... Oh, you so are the challenge opens and closes? Huh? So the challenge opens and closes? Yes. Registration for this particular challenge, which I'm actually going to put it on 
on here, the registration for this particular challenge ends on Friday the 19th, actually. Got it. So this, this coming week. Yeah. This coming week. All right. Fantastic. So tell us, how do people find you? Well, you can find me on Instagram, carolinedeposada.com. You can go to my website, carolinedeposada.com. You can uh, find me on Facebook and LinkedIn uh, with, you know, through Caroline De Posada. It is very easy to find me because it's the same name everywhere. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being here. I'm going to find out what happened to the book. Um, and I'm going to get my copy on it. But now that you give me the, the, the summary of it, now I'm interested in going here. Don't hold me to that promise. It might take me a couple of months to get to it. I have a couple of uh, couple of mastermind groups that were coming up with a few good courses. And part of that is reading a lot of books. So we got a lot of uh, things happening. But definitely, well, I appreciate you taking this time being here. I encourage you to go on to Joaquin de Posada and to TED.com and look up uh, Don't Eat the Marshmallow Yet. And you'll see my dad's TED Talk. I'll definitely look him up and see what's going on. I'm going to buy his book on Amazon regardless. But I'll get to it later on. And I'm going to let other people know. Maybe I'll take a picture of it and put in everything else, tag you in it, and put it so other people can see that it's good. I like sharing all that stuff. So, Or if you oh. have a good picture of it that you want to send to me and share, I'll share it. Or if you tag me and I'll re-share it with everybody else. Awesome. Awesome. Thank all you right. so much for being here. Stay safe. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.